Do you want to know how to pick the best red lipstick shade for your skin tone and how to perfectly apply it? In today's video, I will be sharing with you my tips and tricks. Hello Darklings and welcome to the Notoriously Morbid YouTube channel. My name is Orphea and in today's video I will be talking all about red lipsticks. First things first, we will start by talking about the different types of red lipsticks that Notoriously Morbid sells and how you can pick the best one for your skin tone. So this means I will be talking about colors and about undertones. In the second part of this video, I will be giving you tips and tricks for liquid lipstick application and how to get your perfect red pout. So stay tuned for all of the information. First things first, red lipsticks. These are the red lipsticks that I personally currently own. And as you can probably tell, hopefully tell by the overlay, you can sense a very big team in this. There is one exception to the team and that is this liquid lipstick. These all have a blue undertone this one doesn't. This one has a more orangey undertone. Now, what is the difference between blue tones and red tones that are more orangey? It's the way that they interact with your skin and the type of color that they will give off onto your lips. Now, I quickly want to talk about skin tones and about color matching with skin tones. As you may or may not know, there are three types of skin tones. Cool tones, warm tones, and neutral tones. Cool tones are defined by more cool undertones such as blue veining etc. These are people that have more a pinkish skin generally speaking than people who are warm toned. The second type is warm toned. Now this does not mean tan however most often people who are tanned have a more warm toned skin. However you can see this in a more of a beigey orangey tone of skin. And then the third one is the neutral skin tone and these ones are in between. Now I consider myself a neutral to cool skin tone person. I do have a little bit of warmth in my skin tone at times. For example, when I go into the sun a lot, my skin tone tends to warm up a little bit more because I have some Italian roots somewhere in the family. So in my personal experience, if you have a warm toned skin tone, then orangey reds will be a extremely good match for you and they will complement your skin extremely well. However, if you have a cool toned skin tone, then all of the blue based reds will work a lot better for your skin tone. And if like me, you have more or less a neutral toned skin, wear anything you like. However, I also want to mention that this also will affect the color of your teeth, or at least the appearance of the color of your teeth. The darker the red and the more blue tones mixed into the red, the more white that your teeth will appear. The more orange tones in the liquid lipstick and the more yellow tones in them, the more yellow your teeth will appear. Now, of course, if you have very vibrant colors, the difference between the color of your lips and the color of your teeth will make it very drastically different and you will still see that you have white teeth. However, I personally always will reach for blue toned reds because they are my personal favorite. You can, of course, experiment with this until you find the shade you love most. The shade of red I am wearing today is Stay Evil Doll Face, and this one is still available on the website. And if you go to the website, you will actually see swatches by multiple people wearing this lipstick. So you can see how it looks like on different skin tones. Now, of course, this is all just guidelines. I'm not forcing you to buy a certain shade of red. Just go with whatever you think will look best on you. And of course, feel free to play around and experiment. I tend to find that more darker based reds and blue based reds work better for me. But that's just, of course, from experience and from trying, I think, at least 20 to 50 red lipsticks. Now, let's get into part two of the video. And this is the liquid lipstick application tips and tricks. The first one that I want to give you is something that you do actually way before you start doing your makeup and it is to brush your teeth. 
I tend to take close-up pictures of my lips and of course my teeth will show in some of those pictures and I find nothing more annoying than having something stuck in between my teeth either from my breakfast, from lunch or from dinner depending on when I'm recording a video. Especially because I like to eat oats and oats will just get in between your teeth and it's not the best look. I can of course photoshop it but I just want to warn you that if you want to take close-up pictures of your mouth, of your teeth, then feel free to first brush your teeth. The second step that I always do before I start applying makeup is to apply a moisturizing lip balm. And the one that I currently use is a Notoriously Morbid Slumber Solve. Now, in this clip, you will see that I apply a little bit more after actually doing my makeup. It's because I forgot to record it at the early stages of before I was actually doing my makeup. But I always do this before I even apply something on my face. I will first moisturize my lips so they are nice and crust free. Now, if like me, you sometimes have very, very dry lips and you have cracking lips, then I would recommend doing this way before you actually start doing your makeup. And it is to actually, when you are brushing your teeth, you gently go with your toothbrush over your lips as well, so that you take away any dead skin. You can of course also do this with a lip scrub. There are some very good sugar scrubs that you can make yourself with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of oil or honey. There are tons of recipes you can find online and those work really well as well. Moisturizing your lips is one of the best ways to make sure that afterwards your lipstick will look good and that your lips will look nice and even. So I would highly recommend doing so. Notoriously Morbid Slumber Solve is extremely moisturizing. If you don't have Slumber Solve, then you can of course use a regular lip balm as well. My next tip is to apply all of your makeup and then finish with your lips last. That way, if you want to drink something when you are filming or still eat something, afterwards I would highly recommend brushing your teeth again, but if so, you can still fix it later. I tend to always do my lips last and this has a few reasons. One of them is that the lip balm can really soak into my lips and make them nice and moisturized. Also, if you just scrub them, they will become more red. Now, because we are applying red lipstick, it doesn't matter too much, but if you're applying a softer, more subtle tint, it might show through and you don't want it. Now, what I also do is when applying my foundation, I will go onto my lips and just gently coat them with foundation as well. And I also stretch out my lips a little bit so I don't have those weird cracks showing in them from the different tones. Now, this will ensure that there is a more even base on my lips and that the lipstick will look the same. Now before I actually go in with the foundation etc I will blot off my lips or any excess product of my lips on a paper tissue. I don't show this in the video but I actually do this every single time because there's always a little bit left over of the lip balms on my lips and we don't want that to clog up with the foundation etc. The next step is to use a lip liner that matches the shade of your lipstick or if you don't have that use a transparent one because this is a waxy pencil it will act as a barrier around your lips and make sure that your liquid lipstick stays in place and doesn't bleed as much. Now most of the notoriously morbid liquid lipsticks don't bleed anyways but I like to use this as an extra security barrier. Finally apply your liquid lipstick evenly. I like to start with the cupid's bow and I like to make this x shape and then try and even each side out and then I start with the bottom lip. Now I do gently overline my lips but if you don't want to do this of course you don't have to. I just like to start with the outline on my lips and then fill everything in. Also make sure that you don't use too much product. I tend to go into my lipstick then brush off the excess onto the rim of the lid of the cap of the liquid lipstick. I'm not sure what it's called actually but just on the inside of the liquid lipstick I will rub off the excess product and just use the little bit that is left over. If you don't feel comfortable using the applicator wand from your liquid lipstick what I would recommend is using a makeup tray, putting the lipstick on it and then using a lipstick brush to apply it to your lips. However, for me personally, I feel the Notoriously Morbid Liquid Lipsticks have very good applicator ones and I prefer using those. And to really set your liquid lipstick, what I would also recommend doing is first blotting it off onto some tissue paper, which is something I forgot when creating these overlays and I immediately regretted it because now my entire brush is red. <laughs> And then, of course, setting it with a matte setting powder. And the D-end powder by Notoriously Morbid is absolutely perfect for this. And this will ensure
sure that especially if you're using matte liquid lipsticks that they stay nice and matte and in place all the time. With shimmer and sparkling liquid lipsticks I tend to not do this step simply because it takes away from the shimmer and the shine but for matte liquid lipsticks I really enjoy doing this because it really ensures the matteness of the liquid lipstick and it stays in place even better. And then finally, a bonus tip if you want your liquid lipsticks to stay in place longer is to avoid eating greasy foods and if you drink any drinks is to try and drink with a straw. Because your liquid lipsticks will transfer at least a little bit when eating, when drinking and when kissing, so be careful when doing those things. I personally always drink with straws and specifically with metal straws. I tend to almost always carry one with me in my purse, so whenever I'm out and there isn't a straw in the drink I'm drinking, I will just take out my own. And that way I ensure that my liquid lipsticks stay in place very, very long. These were my tips for red liquid lipsticks, how to pick the ones that will match your skin tone best and also how to apply them so that they last even longer than they usually would. If you have any other tips and tricks you want to share about wearing red liquid lipsticks or liquid lipsticks in general, feel free to let me know in a comment down below and share it with everyone who watches these videos. In the description box of this video you can find all of the information of the notoriously morbid products on my face and of course I will be directly linking you to them. Should you want to place an order feel free to use code ORFIA15 for a 15% discount on your entire order. If you enjoyed this video feel free to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the Notoriously Morbid YouTube channel. We make videos every week and would love to have you for every single one of them. I want to thank you again so much for watching and I will see you next week with a new video. Bye!